Um, my dad was a bishop in Kanye Ward, and he asked me if I wanted to go on a labor mission. I didn't know what it was. But anyway, I, I, I took his advice, and I, I went on a labor mission not knowing that I was coming to Laia. I was all thankful that I was among uh, those who were selected to go and, and serve. I came here as a part-time labor missionary. I was still in high school in my 11th grade, uh, 57, and the 8th grade summer, 57, so two summers in, in succession. I came here to be a part of the building missionary program that is already in operation in, here in Laia. The Brent's brother called me and had asked me if I wanted to go on the, the labor mission. I. Um, came to my room at my sister's house and I knelt down by my bed and I said to Heavenly Father, if I am, if you see me um, um, good to go to Hawaii, you know, if I have any part on this project, send me to Hawaii, I'll be, love to go. They have need of labor missionaries. And I had two of my cousins, uh, William Anyu and uh, Herbert Kealoha. And we played music together a lot. And so we liked being together. So they said, come on, go with us. So I decided to just go ahead and uh, go with them. But my other purpose was because I was injured at a very early age, and my eyes uh, very limited in vision, I wanted to find out my potential what I could do, what I couldn't do, so I could decide somewhere down the line what occupation I should go into. It was a mission and a training, actually, for all of us young men, to learn a, a trade that become our career. So there were a lot of advantages and many of us got jobs because of our preparation from the labor mission. But after we were set apart, I was kind of on a, like I was just baptized again. You know, when you get baptized, you get, you're, you're on, a, on a different level spiritually. I had a great love for the church and, and when they talk about education, I said, I, I'm gonna use that, that college, so I better get on there and do my part. I moved out to, uh, Punolu, right across from uh, Kaya store. We're living on a beach right next to the Catholic church. And that was my uh, first thought, being on a mission, living on a beach. And I, I seen a flagpole. It was the first thing I seen, the flagpole was in the middle. And uh, I seen all the, uh, uh, the missionaries walking around there as we came in, and on the left side it was a watermelon field. On the right, the right side was a sugarcane field. I think there was a water buffalo in the field somewhere over there too. But I think I felt excited. We have the talent, and we have dedication within all of us to be able to give up our time to build this place. Seeing guys that from the South Sea Island, you know, leaving their families or leaving home from, and coming here to work had really made me fully appreciate uh, the gospel and fully appreciate uh, what I'm doing here. It's amazing me how dedicated the men are when they were called to come. Right here was all mud, mud, water, nothing, no buildings, nothing. This was, so we had to build a building, so we, we started around the circle. And you can see around you in the sugar cane field that everything was down flat. And then as we continue on, 
we started to see how things develop, you know, as we build our walls on the floor, foundation in the walls, and then we used to raise the walls up and pull columns to hold the walls together. I was a certified welder. I, I, because the way those buildings were built, we we had all the, the walls in panels. We poured a con the panel on the floor, on the ground, and then after that we lift it up and, and stand it up and then weld those uh, panels together to form the wall for the uh, for the building. At first, a couple of weeks, it was odd because of you know what we had to do, the work we had to do, and you know, and and you come up, you beat your time. I mean, you work for. We were looking, working mud, you know, doing all the labor, carrying things, you know, digging and all this. What time when you come back, you are beat and you are ready for bed. Then I enjoyed it because I enjoyed the company. Great bunch of guys to work with. The leaders, the uh, the young men, especially uh, Mom and uh, uh, and Arthur, uh, that CEO was it, Ines, the Ineses. Man, they had the best meals, man. You work hard, you go there, eat, man. You just want to work harder because you know the next meal will be good. But, you know, it was just a great companionship. I had no worries, you know. My main objective was to build the, the church college. And it's because to help uh, our, our own people so that they have a place to uh, have education, you know. Living together with, I think, different groups or different nationalities of people and I think when you've lived with them you find because you're members of the church the gospel will supersede and cross all boundaries and be able to bring people together that uh, you may see as being different and yet we are all the same. I love the people I work with. <laughs> And, uh, to me, it's a testimony. You know? There were a lot of spiritual moments like that that could happen only on a place and setting as we had. And we could see how uh, the interaction, you know, how there was a caring, uh, this was caring, loving. And though you work hard, yet when you're working for the Lord and you work with men who, who have the same principles, live the same. Uh, ideals and principles, you know, working alongside. Working was easy. I don't know about the rest, but I've never felt tired. I could go on and on and on. One time, President McKay, uh, Mendenhall, uh, came and visited us uh, in Kakila. And, and President Parker said, keep him, keep him. You know, he stood on the side and, you know, to sing, keep him over singing, you know. And President McKay was really enjoyed the, the brethren. We sing a lot of songs. And then uh, he wants to stay and have dinner with us. President uh, Menon Hall said, we have another appointment. And President McKay said, this is more important. <laughs> you know, it's so humble. I feel a man is a prophet and he was set there just like any other missionary. Many times there were accidents that happened here on the campus and should, should, people should have died in many of the instances. And when uh, Billing had an accident uh, and he fell down and, uh, and, and hurt himself, and when I, I can't quite remember the details on it, but he, he should have been dead. But no, with the priesthood, a blessing was given to him. You know, one of the boys uh, uh, got into an accident and uh, went to the doctor and the doctor said that the boy, you know, that this boy will never walk again. And so the next morning we all fasted and uh, the boy walked out of the hospital, you know, and until today he's, he's still walking, he's strong and healthy. Look, the people from all over the world coming here, learning, you know, understanding. The people need to be educated because if you be educated, you can grow. The church can grow. The people grow. This mission has helped me 
to gain that knowledge. Not only because of uh, uh, by doing, but also you gotta study and read and search. You know what you're doing, why, why are you doing all this. That's for everything we did was for love, and that's the thing the the world needs is love. Whenever I see the building. This gave me a good memory of what we have done, you know. I have thanks with my heart for all these things that the Lord has been blessed us here, where the prophet and his uh, uh, blessings were given here. And I know my testimony of, of the power of the priesthood and the power of the blessings of the priesthood, I know it affected many brethren's lives and even my own family's lives. And people will say that. I think they achieved, I think, a great edifice for those who came after them. It is always swells with pride in, in my heart that, that I, had a, I had a part in this. And all the other wonderful men and women who, who participated, it's such a blessing. I guess sometimes, you know, you're in the right place, right time, and the Lord wants you there. But I think the greatest of all was the strengthening and the developing of each individual testimony. The power of the priesthood. Was evident throughout the whole mission. This is the Lord's, uh, the Lord's uh, school. He inspired uh, a living prophet that uh, an educational uh, institution should be built here on campus and it's for the betterment of, of all the, the people throughout, throughout the world, all of the Lord's people. And I see it with my own eyes that uh, President Mackay, his prophecy came true and it's, it's working. The mission that we came here for is really fulfilled. I said it wasn't a sacrifice. It's something that I would do again. <laughs>